Welcome to DEF CON 3. I'm KT McFarland. Even though the U.S. and NATO's mission in Afghanistan formally ended last week, it's becoming increasingly clear that this war is far from over. Joining us to discuss are the Washington Institute's Ambassador James Jeffrey and Heritage Foundation's James Carafano. Let me turn to you first, Ambassador. What do you think? Have, have the Taliban just been waiting us out? Are they going to come in and take our place as we head for the exit? Uh, KT, they certainly are going to try. That's clear. Uh, unfortunately, once again, we've put a deadline, the end of 2016, for the withdrawal of all remaining U.S. forces, and the NATO training troops would leave, too, uh, at that time, and the Taliban uh, will try to sweep things up after then. Uh, and this is of great concern because we've actually achieved a great deal in Afghanistan in the last few years, and we have the support increasingly of the American public. Well, let me turn to you then, James Carafano. Would it make a difference if the United States forces stayed on in a, in a combat role um, instead of heading out first in a training role and then out completely? Well, this will be one of the intriguing stories of 2015, which, which how Afghanistan progresses over the next year. You know, we bounced around a lot of numbers of what would the residual U.S. force be that would still, you know, prevent the country from the Taliban sweeping back in. And the 10,000 is kind of at the low end of the number. It's not the lowest the administration would have gone, which is zero. It's not the safe number everybody wanted, which probably would have been more like 17, 20,000. But it's a number that's enough, enough to at least keep the U.S. in the game. So it, it, you know, there's a lot of factors at play here, including what the other surrounding countries do. Mm -hmm. So this is a year I, I, don't, I wouldn't be one one taking bets about whether there's going to be big dramatic changes. Well, let me then go to you, Ambassador. You've been in these jobs before. Once the United States makes a commitment, we're getting out, we're doing this, this is for sure. Would, would the United States reverse course? Would we, in fact, ramp up forces in Afghanistan? Um, you know, you just pointed out pu American public opinion polls seem to have been turning on this, that they now think that Afghanistan was not such a bad idea after all. Funny you've mentioned that, KT, because that's exactly what happened when I was in Iraq. Uh, we did withdraw all of our forces, uh, and uh, the Iraqis were okay with that at the time. Then uh, ISIS came in, as we just heard on your show, and uh, the result is we've got our troops back in there, but we've lost one-third of Iraq in the process. We don't want to lose one-third of uh, Afghanistan to the Taliban and to al-Qaeda elements. Uh, let's keep the troops on. Let's make this a decision for the next administration, not this one. Uh, pulling out at the end of 2016 is an ideological uh, uh, statement. It's not a military or political step that makes any sense to anybody. Um, you know, KT, no, yeah, I, James, I was, could you jump in with that? Because you said 20,000 would be a responsible number. Would that make a difference? Well, obviously, more U.S. troops would, would increase the odds of success. But I, I think that's a really key point. And, and that's where something has changed. This administration does not want another Iraq. The president doesn't want as part of his legacy that they completely walk away and you have another meltdown. So if the American people are okay with this, if the Afghans are okay with this, if it's showing that, that the United States, that Afghanistan is hanging on as a coherent country, I, I think there is a potential that the president might blink and walk out the door and leave those 10,000 troops or even increase them slightly because mm -hmm. he doesn't want another Iraq on his hands before the end of his presidency. And he would get that if we walked away today. Ambassador Jeffrey, um, James Carafano just mentioned that it has a lot to do with the neighbors, um, Pakistan, Iran, India. Where do you see this going as we leave? Well, uh, James is absolutely right. But the key thing is, and it's surprising, aside from the American public increasingly, the Afghani public in government, uh, most of the neighbors do want us to stay on. Uh, they see a destabilized Afghanistan, the Taliban running amok as a threat uh, to certainly Pakistan with uh, the links to the Pakistani Taliban, certainly to Iran given the Sunni Shia uh, split throughout the Middle East, and ultimately to India and to Central Asia. Uh, this is something where for a minimal cost uh, we can make a huge difference in a very big and important region. You know, James Carafano, I'm going to give you the last word. Some people have speculated that the nightmare scenario for 2015 is that the Taliban moves into Afghanistan and it hooks up with ISIS that's coming out of Iraq. Do you think that's a realistic uh, thing to worry about? Well, I mean, I think it's a possibility. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure it's inevitable. I mean, I think the Afghan security forces have demonstrated that they can fight. We do have 10,000 uh, U.S. forces here. We do have a NATO presence. Uh, I think if, if the Taliban made big gains, you probably see a resurgence of military assistance. So I'm not sure that, that 2015 is the year of catastrophic change in Afghanistan, but I think that the trends 
what we do in 2015 is, is really going to determine what happens after that. And a successful Afghanistan makes that part of the world better. And, and that's something we really read right now. We don't need another major area falling apart on us. Well, thank you both very much, Ambassador James Jeffrey and James Carafano. For more on this developing story, stay with foxnews.com. I'm KT McFarland, and that's it for DEFCON 3.